This episode, Our Aging Population, a discussion about home preparations for seniors. The Handyman Pros have a discussion with Anthony Sinati from the National Association of Senior Advocates and Ed Padilla from the Association of Certified Handyman Professionals about preparing your home for seniors. Welcome to the Handyman Pros Radio Show, home improvement and maintenance tips from the pros. Thanks for listening to another edition of the Handyman Pros Radio Show, where our goal is to help you save time, money, and aggravation on your home maintenance and repair. This edition is entitled, Our Aging Population, a discussion about home preparedness for, ser- for seniors. To help me explain, I'm here with my ever-cheerful co-host and old buddy, John. John, what have you been doing this week? Yo, Larry, I'm back. Yeah, hey. Um, well, it's been an interesting, uh, interesting week. Uh, things are continuing, uh, you know, to roll along here. Um, some beautiful, some beautiful weather that, uh, that we've been, uh, kind of blessed with here. True. And, um, you know, the thing that I've done this past week is, uh, I installed some, some grab bars, uh, in a shower, uh, for, for a customer and also some additional railings for them as well. And you know they're getting, you know they're getting older. You know both of them on, one's kind of on a cane and the other one's in a in a walker. And things are, you know, it's it's pretty, you know, it's pretty tough for them, you know, to get around. So you have to be looking at these kind of things, which I think kind of flows into uh, flows into the show. It this, uh, flows this week. in perfectly, I would say. Yep. So yeah. this week we uh, we actually got contacted by Ed from the Ed's been on the show before. He's with the National or the uh, Association of Certified Handyman Professionals, and he has formed up an alliance with uh, Ed or, or I mean with uh, Anthony from the NAOSA or the the Senior Advocates is is what we'll call it shortly. Um, we had a great conversation. Talked about a lot of different things, but talked a lot about you know home about making sure you hire good contractors and 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 a couple of really. Good Good tips and tricks on, on modifying your home for seniors. And we had a great conversation, and here it is. We're here with Ed Padilla, founder of the Association of Certified Handyman Professionals, and Anthony Sinati from the National Association of Senior Advocates. Welcome, Ed and Anthony. Thank you. Uh, great to be here. Yeah, same here. Thanks right. again for, uh, for having us on. All right, perfect. Fantastic. Well, Thank we you. wanted to talk. Uh, we're going to start by talking to Anthony. So, Anthony, give us some background on the National Association of, of um, Senior Advocates, or the NAOSA, as we'll talk to it from now on. So, yeah, sure. No, thank you. Uh, I founded NAOSA in 2016 uh, for two primary reasons. The first is I wanted to give older adults and their children a resource to where they could find ethical professionals in a number of different professions to make sure that they're not uh, taken advantage of by unscrupulous uh, professionals. Uh, And secondly, I wanted to give those same professionals a platform to allow them to stand out from their competition. Uh, we We founded it officially in 2016 after years of research and we, we got it going because we had personal experiences with older adults getting taken advantage of, and we just got tired of it, quite frankly. And we wanted to give people uh, an independent, non-biased resource where they could get information on a number of different professions and uh, that type of thing. Uh, and we also, again, want to make sure the good guys and the, the good women had a platform to stand out. Um, I personally work in senior living. I've I've seen a bunch of things, uh, not so much in senior living, but in the real estate industry, in the legal industry. And I can give you a couple examples if if you like. Uh, One is pocket listings where realtors will will go to older adults and they'll do what they they'll pocket the listing. And what that means is they will won't put the, um, the house on the market. Instead, they'll get both sides of the commission. And what that does with older adults is, A, they're vulnerable, B, their house usually is not, you know, up to the uh, where it needs to be to sell. And so a real estate agent might come in there and tell them, don't don't update their house. They'll sell as is, but then they'll, they'll sell it. They'll pocket it and just sell it to their people. And what that does is it doesn't put the house on the market. It doesn't expose it to competition and counter offers and that type of thing. And in a hot market, that's not good. 
so I experienced that personally uh, with some uh, realtors in the D.C. area, which really drove me crazy. Uh, and secondly, the other thing that got me started here was uh, an attorney who I was working with an older adult and just way overbilled the uh, older adult who didn't have a lot of money to begin with uh, for some services to assist them to get into a nursing home. And uh, it was perfectly legal what the attorney did, but it certainly was not ethical. And we've all had those experiences. I'm not just talking about real estate or legal. Every industry, we I think we've all personally experienced getting taken advantage of. Uh, so we wanted to do something about it. So that's that's why we started the National Association of Senior Advocates. Outstanding. So yeah. So actually, just working as an advocate, and it, and some of these issues that you brought up there, like pocket listings, this is something that I don't know how you know. We have a number of people that have that do uh, real estate investing and things that listen to the show, but pocket right. listings are actually pretty common. And what that is is essentially they're going to sell it probably to a wholesaler to somebody that they're not going to give you top dollar for it. It really is true. They it, there's always people out there. There's wholesalers that are looking for deals, and I mean they're looking for really, really, really good deals. It's pennies on the dollar. And they, they justify it by the fact that the house usually does need a lot of repair and things like that. But it also there's also competition amongst wholesalers. And if you, have, if you give it just to one uh, listing agent, you won't see that competition. So that's one of the things about pocket listings that, that, that people don't quite understand. It's kind of inter, it's real estate lingo, but um, it happens a lot in commercial real estate as well. Pocket mm-hmm. listings are really common in commercial real estate, but that's for a different reason. That's mostly so people don't um, – when they put their business out for sale, it's not it, – they don't advertise to the world that, hey, my business is for sale and all their customers go away. But this is a little, right. bit, little bit of a different thing. And and w- at the Handyman Pros Radio Show, we talk about a lot about when we hire professionals, and it does we talk about contractors largely and about hiring handy about being professional and understanding that you do need to ask a lot of questions and they need to be referenced and they need to have a good reputation, which is why Ed brought you to us because Ed is all about professional handymen. Because believe it or not, right, Ed, there are professional handymen out there. Definitely, definitely. Uh, one of the things that uh, led us, uh, that, that caught our attention with uh, NAOSA is the fact that they were very similar to how we started. Uh, we wanted to better the industry, the the handyman industry, and that's what that's what draws a lot of the the credibility and the people to us uh, to join our group. And it was just a perfect fit. Um, the numbers also are just staggering. You know, it's um, and and these percentages might be a little off. Uh, I'd have to do some more research on it, but uh, about 25% of the U.S. population right now is about 65 years or older. And the way it's going is um, we're looking at from uh, 50 million plus now, we're looking at an increase up to 80 million before we know it. I mean, it's happening. This this is going to happen. And unfortunately, you know, all the, the, the bad things that are, that are coming along with it, we need to put a stop to that right now. We need to make uh, – be aware of, of, you know, the older folks. Heck, we're going to be there. We're going to be part of that uh, 80 million uh, folks before, before long. Um, some of us uh, more so <laughs> quicker than others. <laughs> thanks ed thanks yeah. ed really. <laughs> yeah. thanks ed gee that, that makes me feel great like i said no, we're, but you, that man. but that is but that is true that is true ed i mean uh, the 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 amount of the population that's uh that's getting older i mean i've experienced it of uh you know with my parents and and it just absolutely creeps up on you very fast um so i know a lot of people out there listening to this you know um you probably are experiencing the same thing, uh, you know. Before you know it, um, you know your parents are are getting older and older, and you have to uh, you have to start thinking about what's best what's best for them. Yeah. And uh, you know, with the senior advocates and things like that, Anthony, it mm-hmm. sounds like you know you guys are are really putting some good things in place to uh, to watch for the scams, providing some great people, and um, you know, do, doing the doing the right things for them. Yeah, thank you. You know, our our mission is to find one or two really good people in every profession in every town throughout the country to where these people, whether they be handymen or attorneys or realtors or 
insurance, whatever it is that we vetted them. We know via interviews, like when Ed and I were speaking, you know, we're on the exact same wavelength. And you can tell when you're talking with people. You know, we want to make sure in every town there's a professional handyman that uh, an adult child or a senior can go on call and know they're going to be treated right. You know, with respect, they're not going to get overbilled and the jobs won't be done. If we can do that in every town across the country, we're going to make a huge difference. And that's really our goal. Mm hmm. John, we just you just did a job for for someone that actually you had that situation come up. The uh, you did the trim work for the person and and, and all of that, and it, it really explain that story a little bit, John. While we're just while we're thinking about it, because they they had some concerns, right? Well, yeah, and, and I think I get I get calls. Uh, um, you know, it, and back and back to uh, your point, Ed, is that you know one of the things that the aging population you, we're seeing senior living homes going up everywhere. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, where I live here and outside of Atlanta, um, you know, it's not unlike probably every place else. They're going up everywhere. One of the things that I get asked a lot is from people who are, um, you know, sometimes they're realtors that are selling, selling home for some some elderly people. And a lot of people want to downsize. They're starting to think about it. That's kind of a very proactive approach to this thing. And it's, you know, they're very hesitant of, of um, you know, being able to trust anybody to, uh, to go in there if they, you know, if, if they know what they're doing to, to help the, the, the older people. So there's not a, a, a source like, uh, you know, senior advocates that you can go to. A lot of these people didn't know that, uh, that can go to to, to find quality qualified people so you know i went in and i i did a bunch of things like grab bars and and um all kinds of things to to help them out you know um you know because they're these these old folks are in walkers they're you know they're bumping into things you have to account for that you have to watch out for trip hazards you know there's all kinds of things that we can talk about but you know i did a lot of work for for them um you know and and that's you just have to be aware of of all these things especially if it's uh if it's your parents you know so it's a uh, it's great to have a resource and it's hard to you know it's actually it's pretty hard to find some people that you can uh, that you can really trust unfortunately mm-hmm. you know yeah yeah it's about uh building relationships i think mm-hmm. um so many times you 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 go to a house and and um you know, just any house uh, aside from uh, an elderly's home, an elderly person's home. You know, they 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 don't trust you because they don't know you very well. Mm-hmm. It's it's important to build that relationship, and that relationship shouldn't be okay. Uh, I'm going to make twenty five bucks here. I'll see you when you call, type of mm-hmm. thing. Um, it should be a little bit more, especially with the elderly. And and we've got a mess. In my opinion, we have an, a mess on our hands if we don't uh, we don't address this now. Uh, as handyman contractors, any service that that you provide for elderly people, uh, I think we need to make a lot of things make ourselves aware of not only the uh, you know hey these folks uh, will need a helping hand, but uh, you know it, it should change our attitudes to be a little bit more. Um, I don't know, uh, courteous, uh, a little bit more, uh, less uh, pushy to 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 to, to get uh, that 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 job or whatever the case. I'm probably not explaining it well, but uh, I think relationship building is key uh, with this, and this is a special relationship building when when you're dealing with uh, with uh, the senior citizen. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree a hundred percent, Ed. And that, I think everybody out there can can relate to that. You know, when you call somebody and you're like, um, you know, who is this person? Versus, you know, it does take a little while to to build up a a, a relationship. But uh, you know, once you do, and as Larry was saying, is that, um, you know, I would go by and I would I check up on on uh, on these folks every once in a while. You know, I'll go over there and I'll. Just you know, stick my head in, knock on the door. Hey, how you doing? Um, everything okay? You know, it's just kind of uh, you know one of those 
one of those humanity checks, you know, yeah, yeah. Just, just seeing how things are going. And then I go about, uh, you know, I go about my day, you know, so. Yeah. Very good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Outstanding. So, uh, Anthony, are there any, like, like, I have seen a trend, and I don't know if this is a national trend. I've seen a local trend, particularly it seems like COVID's kind of thrown some interesting curves our way because I know, like, my wife's uh, parents were actually about days away from signing, going into an assisted living facility, Mm -hmm. and then COVID hit, and they're like, ah, this is not happening. We are not going into into this. So they have decided to – I used the term before that you said has been going on forever, but I called it age in place. So we've been in the process of of doing some modifications to their home to make it more senior-friendly. And um, we, we of course, they have a good handyman, so it's not a big issue. But, um, yeah. but what are like what are some of the things that you see that are that are kind of common repair or not repairs, but we'll call them modifications. John was talking about some things, and he's right. You know, you have to understand that that people are you know sometimes they're walking with canes or they're walking with um, walkers or perhaps wheelchairs. So so things like yeah. ramps. So what other what other things are some things that you've seen out there? And Ed, you can chime in here too if you've seen you know what sort of things are we adding to homes. Because I think our goal here on this show is to kind of give people this awareness that if you if you're not dealing with this at some time in the probably not too distant future, you're going to be. I mean, even my kids yeah. need to kind of understand that that you know I'm not all, all that far away. I mean, it's it, we're we're big on planning, so we'd kind of talk about things in spans of five and ten years. And um, you know, ten years from now, I don't know if I I will be if I fall off a roof, I'm going to be fully a non-functional tomorrow but um generally you know in 10 years i might have mobility issues or things so what are some things that yeah. you've seen that are that are kind of common well you know that the whole age in place thing has been uh, going on for quite some time and it's 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 there for a variety of reasons one is you know people have lived in their homes for a long time many times the house is paid for and you know they're paying they might be paying the property taxes and the utilities but that's really it so you know people work their whole lives to pay off a house. They don't want to up and move and start paying again. Uh, I'm a big fan of retire communities. I just want to put it out there. I've seen some really good happening, but really for affordability, a lot of times can't people can't move um, or they love their neighborhood. There's a lot of emotions tied to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so the whole agent in place thing has been going on for a while. And when you look at agent in place, you really want to look at a lot of different factors. I'm going to let Ed jump in on a lot of this, but you know, what's going on now is, you know, grab bars in, in, in bathrooms, as you mentioned, uh, one floor living. So a lot of times the master bedroom will be on the uh, second floor, but the stairs really aren't doing it anymore or aren't accessible. So you, you, there's a master suite built on, on, on the first floor for accessibility. Then there's the ramps outside. There's a bunch of other things that are needed to age in place. And I'll let Ed jump in as far as more specifics as to what he's seen or what he's done in in the marketplace. Yeah. Thanks for that, Anthony. Yeah. Um, I I guess I I may not be saying it, uh, saying the term correctly, but senilic, um, uh, dealing with the senile patients, they, um, if you haven't, if you haven't dealt with, uh, with it, it's, it's kind of sad, uh, in a sense that they have a strict schedule um, and they they have they can't be interrupted. It's 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 something that uh, it might trigger them. And everyone's different. Um, but and I'm not I'm in no way a doctor of any sort. Uh, I don't know uh, the ins and outs of it. Maybe we should just try to understand a little bit more. But uh, you know, it's basic things like always create a safe environment. You know, the things that that and I hate to put it this way, but if you don't leave you don't leave a, a, a loaded tool um, unattended with a child, and you shouldn't with a, uh, a senilic patient um, uh, or any elderly, for that matter, because accidents do happen. Um, don't leave doors open. You wouldn't with a child. Don't leave doors open. Um, again, they have a – senilic patients have a strict schedule, and, and they, they do things – over and over again, repeatedly, just so they they have that that uh, dare I say muscle memory. Um, but uh, but yeah, don't de- leave doors open. By no means, if you're you're switching out an outlet cover, 
or you know, uh, put it back. Don't leave with that that uh, that cover open to to get a tool and then come. Just you know, try to create a safe uh, safe place. Uh, sub panels. I don't recommend any handyman at all mess with any sub panels whatsoever unless you are licensed to do so. Um, and if you are licensed to do so, even if it's in the garage, uh, that sub panel needs to. You need to keep a cover on that sub panel. Uh, ladders. Ladders is key. Uh, if you're if you're if you're going going to do roof work. Uh, don't leave a ladder out. Um, y- y- that's a high liability for not only uh, synolytic patients but also children. Yeah, they they want to know, you know, what what's up there. So they're, the first thing they're going to do is climb, and they'll probably uh, <laughs> they'll probably uh, test each other uh, or dare each other to do so. Um, you know, build it's that building relationship too with the spouse of uh, of of the patient who. You know, let them know what what triggers them. Is is a drill gonna gonna set them off? Um, and not not all patients are like this, um, but uh, you know, be extra friendly and considerate. Uh, if you haven't smiled in a while, maybe it's time to <laughs> maybe yeah. it's time to pry that smile. And and they will react a whole lot better to that. Um, it, it, there has to be some kind of um, aura about you. That uh, that lets everyone know that you're 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 there for the right reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, folks it, just know they, they just know if if you're there for to make a quick buck, they, they'll know. Yeah, uh, sooner or later. Um, those are a few things. Uh, you know, they're they're not they're not uh, uh, accredited things that I'm talking about. They're just basic common sense things i'm sure there are millions of other things that we need to look out for um those are just like i said just those are just a few things and i'm sure we can come up with a, a few uh, more things yeah. on the show and, um, and, I'll, and, uh, and one of these days i would like to have a little kind of uh, maybe a quiz or an exam for our members to say hey look, look this is coming this is this is happening these are the things that you need to be aware of and it's more of a learning tool than anything but uh Anyway, that's a good that's a good uh, that's, that's a good I... list and and um, and well said. You know, a couple of things that that you know when you're out there and you're and you're looking around the house, um, you know, things that I've always looked for was 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 rugs, things trip hazards. You know, for the yeah. for the for the folks out there, you know, a lot of these folks are you know they're experiencing hearing loss, um, so you have to really be. Uh, tuned into that, and Ed, you're 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 right on with the senility. Uh, a lot of these folks have what's known as sundowners disease or sundowners, and it's a, you know, when the sun goes down around eight o'clock, they can really start to change too. So you really want to you really want to have some good lighting in there. Um, I mean, I went through this. Both my parents were, um, you know, at the end there were pretty um, uh, senile and um, kind of dysfunctional at that point. So, um, you know, and, and, you know, today for the, for the kids, uh, for the younger people out there, put, put cameras in the home, you know, yeah. they're, they're, they're cheap. You can put cameras in the home. You can look out after mom and dad when you're doing, you know, work and things like that. I mean, there's, um, you know, I mean, I had to reconfigure the bathroom with the handrails and maybe a higher toilet bowl. I mean, uh-huh. the list, the list kind of goes, uh, list kind of goes on and on and on. So, um, you know, yeah. and good and good handymen will, you know, like you said, um, b- building this trust will will be able to offer up these type of uh, suggestions as well. So, excellent. Yeah, yeah. And, and really important. If I can jump in, is and as like like you said, is you know the number one uh, issue with older adults and what really causes a lot of. Um, mobility issues and um, that type of thing is tripping. I mean, that's the number one risk for older adults staying home is these tripping hazards. Uh, That's why they live on the first floor. That's why the grab bars are really important. Um, You you know, the ramps and all that good stuff uh, is really, really important. And and to have a professional there, um, a handyman professional who's working in their best interest and looking at what they need and not overcharging them, you know, and having someone they can trust is really, 
really important um, because, you know, there's a lot of bad, bad people out there who are just in it for the buck, who aren't in it for the long term. Uh, you know, they have a me first attitude when they're working with people. So it's really important that not just older adults, but er everybody has a source that they can refer to for for honest professionals. And that's what Ed and I are, are trying to accomplish. Outstanding. All right. Well, I like that camera idea, John, because actually, if you had a camera on the front door, you'd see the roofer come up before he put the roof <laughs> on. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. You know, exactly. it's it's uh, te the technology is something. Certainly, any handyman can install a camera system, and there's a million different ones. I know we have a, we use Arlo at our house. We catch the UPS driver, we catch the deer, we catch everything and anything. <laughs> my neighbor's dog. Um, but we also do. You know, if if we had seniors in place, it would be great to be able to just see the comings and goings of people that come and you know that are coming and going along with other you know, issues of if they're coming and going. Um, I, I had a, uh, my m um, former mother-in-law actually um, had, had the beginning stages of Alzheimer's and she walked out of the house one day and actually took a left instead of a right and almost went out into a major highway. And I caught her. Actually, it was only happenstance. I happened to be driving in and caught her um, before mm. she got out too far. And so pretty uh, kind of scary, actually. It actually was kind of scary. It was pretty much a, an eye opener for us. And, um, at the at the time i you know i, I picked her up I, I said where are you going you know she goes i'm going home and i'm like it's the other way and uh you know it's like nope. okay um so it, it opened our eyes up a lot of this um stuff is just is is from as if you're younger you know under you have to see some of the signs right and the signs are there the signs are are mobility issues uh, the trip hazards are huge you know if a mm -hmm. if a senior breaks a hip it's life threatening it's yeah, not that's it's right. it's not just just a broken bone anymore it's really a life-threatening issue and so one has to you know has to be aware of some of these things and and understand even at our advanced age as we like to say you know we can't do the things we used to be able to do i still as i always say i think i'm 25 with you know 26 or 7 years of experience but um not anymore 25 i think i am and i think i'm bulletproof but you know nope <laughs> uh you know so it is what it is um Anything else you all would like to add? Um, you know, I, the, the only thing I think, and I've, I've, I'm repeating myself, but the country is getting older. And 22% um, uh, of the U.S. as of 2019 was uh, 60 and older. Uh, you know, they call it the silver tsunami. Everybody's heard, hey, you know, country's getting older it's getting older watch out well it's here and you know and um fraud is an issue uh last year there's a um one in five uh, seniors have been a victim of financial fraud uh one in five um last year alone um fraud cost u.s consumers 1.9 billion so uh it's not going to get any better and um, older adults and their children um, really need a resource, a reliable resource that, where they know they can go and be comfortable in dealing with the person. And, you know, we've all been victims of it, um, you know, and because we, we all can't be experts in every single profession. You guys are experts in the handyman profession, but if you're going to going to get a, an attorney or an insurance policy you have no idea nor should you because that's not your expertise so there's so much going on right now and with the internet and everybody has an opinion on how to do things it's just um really something has to be done so we're just trying to make an effort to, to do some good and, and uh, I, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, speak on your show for sure Oh, not a problem. So how does someone get a hold of you, Anthony? Just our website. Um, go to um, N-A-O-S-A dot org, National Association of Senior Advocates, and information is there. Um, we have best practices that we have on the website for um, home contractors that applies to handyman and any member of our association, and even if they're not a member, I would encourage them to uh, the consumers just to go to our site 
if you're working with a handyman professional or a contractor or anyone else, just print off these best practices. And before you do business, make sure that your your contractor sees these best practices and agrees to them. And they're not they're not hard best practices. It's be licensed and insured. You know, give accurate uh, quotes, complete the job, that type of thing. <laughs> That we've all experienced, right? Didn't we're, we're laughing. Right. We see it every day, you know, oh, yeah. every day. And it doesn't yeah, matter what the age is, right? It does yeah, not matter. Especially if, especially if someone's coming in lowballing you. you know, that's, and when I hired contractors, you know, you have, you know, the guy is charging way too much money. And then you have the guy coming in really low and it doesn't make sense, right? And so, shoot, I, 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 I have tons of stories about that. But, just having these best practices that professionals in the industry have agreed to and letting, again, whoever you're dealing with, put that in front of the people you're dealing with and make sure they agree to it. If they don't, then, you know, you need to find someone else for sure. Yeah. ten four. four. That's, that's really yeah. good. Um, Ed, you have a set of practices of best practices. Do you want to add in a little bit here? Um, yeah, yeah, I will. Um, but first I, I, I wanted to make sure that uh, folks understood um, with uh, how ACHP partners with uh, NAOSA, um, you know, in order to, uh, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Anthony, in order to be put on, on the roster for, um, for uh, senior advocates to, to contact you, you must be an ACHP member. Um, and we do this uh, just, uh, just to, you know, bring that credibility to, to let people know that uh, these, our members, um, you know, they, they, they pledge, um, if I can say that, uh, to do what is right um, and, and um, obviously be that, that person that's going to build a relationship uh, and bring credibility and be affiliated with uh, ACHP and uh, NA, NAOSA. Make folks aware of is is the partnership uh, between us and uh, NAOSA. Um, one of the things that uh, and, and Anthony, correct me if I'm wrong, um, it, it's exclusive for ACHP members. In other words, if you're gonna if if uh, the senior uh, group that has access to NAOSA uh, is gonna contact a handyman, they'll be contacting ACHP members. Um, and, uh, and, and these guys vowed to, to, uh, stick with a code of ethics. Uh, and, um, you know, that's part of their credibility and they've got a lot to lose. Um, number one, most of them do use, uh, our insurance program. Um, so that's a biggie. There's a liability there. Um, but most, most of all credit, credibility, you know, a lot of these guys, uh, are credible, they they want to be credible. They want to learn. They want to be part of something uh, something big, and that's what uh, that's what we're trying to provide. So that that's kind of in a nutshell our relationship with uh, NAOSA, and uh, we we love it. I think it's a it's a match. It's a perfect match in my opinion. Um, but uh, but like I touched on before the 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 uh, the the. Um, the credibility and, and the ability to, to follow and keep uh, what we have in place um, is is key to every handyman, especially our members. Um, it, it's it's what makes them credible, in my opinion, to keep that code of ethics and to establish themselves as as someone to be trusted. Um, so, perfect. Ed, how does somebody get a hold of you? Uh, we could be reached at um, handymanassociation.org. Uh, and um, like I said, we, we can also be reached by phone at 407-462-8822. Uh, email address ed at handymanassociation.org. All right. Well, guys, I'd like to thank you for coming on the show. John, any last comments? No, I, lo I love, the, uh, love the conversation. And... Um... Looking forward to talking with you folks again. All right. Thanks, fellas. Great. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Enjoyed it. I want to thank Ed and Anthony for being on the show. John, what are some of the key takeaways? Yeah, that was a really nice discussion, and I'm, I'm glad that we had uh, Anthony on and, and as well as Ed um, because this is something that uh, you know I've had to contend with 
in in uh, in my life with my aging parents. So um, you know, I, I'm glad that uh, you know every, everybody out there needs to be thinking about this if if they're not already. You know, if you have aging parents and uh, you know aging parents, they, John, some of us aren't that far away. Who are you yeah. kidding? So yeah, I mean, I might be there. I might be there. I've got to take my own advice here. <laughs> That's right. But, so you know, I, I think a couple of things that that I uh, you know that I took away from uh, uh, this conversation was that you know I've heard the statistics before about the aging population uh, in the in our country, and it is it is uh, quite a shocker. Uh, it, we are getting a lot older. I mean, this this country as a whole. So it's uh, you, you know everybody out there. You probably already noticed, right? Senior homes are popping up everywhere, as we talked about in the. Uh, in the show itself, but uh, you know, one of the things that happens is that these these older folks need help, and they become you know people are out there and they become kind of targets, you know, for some unscrupulous type of activity, you know, where they're charging too too much, they're not doing the right work, they're ripping people off, unethical and, behavior, uh, you know, un- yeah, I mean, so behavior. you know. That's the that's kind of my takeaway. There was the other, you know, that that they can be that can be targets, and you know, as Anthony was talking about, which you know, kind of brings us to the organization that he started, the the NAOSA, uh, which really is kind of a um, a safety valve, if you will, uh, a, a real help uh, in the in the in the world of uh, you know these these people that are needing help and and they want to be treated fairly and it's a way to find to find good people and with that is the uh you know that that relationship that they have with uh with ed's group that find certified handyman handyman across you know that network so that people can be assured that they're getting quality people out there that are going to treat them fair and uh you know treat them with uh with respect and the and the price um you know, is, is, uh, is right for the work that is performed. So, you know, that was, uh, that was kind of my, my takeaway. So the bottom line is, you know, it's just building those relationships and, and, uh, finding trusted professionals. Yep. And I think that, that I concur with all of those points. It's, uh, it's kind of something that in my life, I haven't had much of a chance to do that. My parents passed away what I would call early. Um, hopefully I don't follow suit, but, uh, didn't have much uh, worry about my parents, but I know in your case, John, you spent a, a good portion of the past number of years. It's, it's been a couple of years since then, but I know for a long time you were forever sh- flying to Chicago and, and I know you were struggling with it. It was really hard. And so a lot of the things that from my perspective is just that, that these, this organization, the, the advocates for the, for senior, um, or the senior advocates, national association of senior advocates is a great resource for somebody if you just if you just don't know and like in your case so you're you're trying to deal with chicago you can find a trusted professional from their organization in chicago when you're here in atlanta this i believe it to be a a, a pretty common occurrence anymore you know where where you don't always live close by like we did in the past and so these these resources and some of these things that we talk quite a bit too about just uh you know some of the things that you have to be concerned about in in the home and and dealing with people and if you're doing work in the home it, it there were a lot of really interesting points that came out of the show so all in all i think it was outstanding definitely a bunch of really good takeaways out of that show anything else you wanted to add john no no i think you hit it right in the head so i'm, I'm really happy that we uh that we had the, the those two uh those two gentlemen on and i think it opens up a uh you know further conversations about uh you know preparing homes for uh for seniors i i concur completely i was wondering john you know, do you think that the aliens worry about their elderly people? I mean, the spaceships that, that are forever landing in my yard, I don't ever see anything really old in them like that. They're always brand new. Have you been taking yours apart like I've been taking mine apart? I don't, I don't know about you, but the, uh, the dude that landed in my yard, he had a ramp. And there you go. Folks, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please send us an email, questions at handymanprosradioshow.com. Go to our website uh, and leave us a message. We actually have a little voice thing up on the corner, um, you could, and that's at handymanprosradioshow.com. You can join our Facebook group at Handyman Pros or follow us on Twitter at Handyman Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've enjoyed this podcast and have derived some value from it, here's four things you can do. One, tell your friends about this podcast. 
Two, hit subscribe on your podcast player. While you're there, leave us a review. Three, subscribe to our newsletter by going to handymanprosradioshow.com and click on the subscribe button. We'll inform you of upcoming events, shows, and give you actionable tips for maintaining your home and property. And four, send us an email with your questions to questions at handymanprosradioshow.com. That's handymanprosradioshow.com. That's our show for this week. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week on the Handyman Pros Radio Show.